Alright, I am back with a combination Destiny 2 and Diablo 4 video. Uh, this is going to be the first in kind of a mini-series I figured I would do sort of comparing and contrasting Destiny 2 and Diablo 4. Mainly it's going to be about things that I think Diablo 4 does well, that I think Destiny 2 could learn from or kind of has lost over time. Uh, this is not meant to rag on Destiny 2 or say Destiny 2 sucks, like I just wrote about today, how I really like uh, what they did with Deep Dives, and like jumping back into it to play after Diablo, still very fun to play, like I still very much enjoy it. Uh, but Diablo 4 is the new hotness, and I am going to be devoting the majority of my time to that for the foreseeable future, so much so I'm a little worried about even finishing the season fast this season in Destiny, and I'm definitely not going to craft everything. Um, but, uh, some people might ask, like, why are you comparing these games? Like, they're totally different genres. Destiny's a shooter, Diablo's an ARPG, like a top-down game. Uh, and yet, like, if you like Destiny, I think you're gonna like Diablo. I realize that there's, like, kind of an entire generation of people, well, kids, or they used to be kids, maybe, uh, where they did not grow up with Diablo. My first Diablo was Diablo 2, and then I played that obsessively, Diablo 3, I played that obsessively. And the reason these are linked is because Diablo was sort of the real genesis of, like, the casual MMORPG, ARPG, action RPG, uh, that was about loot and builds, but it, w it wasn't quite as complex or focused on giant multiplayer raids and things like that as, like, MMOs, like EverQuest or WoW, things like that. It was more accessible. So Diablo did that for... A long time uh, and then we had Borderlands and Borderlands was a shooter that was trying to echo all the same lessons of Diablo where with loot rarities and like you know uh, skill loadouts and kits and um, you know ability cooldowns and things like that and uh, you know mo modifiers on guns things like that and it it really worked the Borderlands series is massively successful even if you like three less than two whatever it's still an enormous series and all of this led to, you know, the eventual loot shooter craze, I guess. Like, Borderlands was around for a really long time with no competition. And then Destiny arrived, and that was sort of a, a blending of the MMO elements with, like, a huge player base, communal, you know, three-player, six-player activities, uh, comp more complicated mechanics than most things in Borderlands, um, better, certainly, I would say, better gunplay and movement. And, you know, the rest is kind of history, and many other games have tried to compete with Destiny. Some have ultimately failed completely. Some were pretty good, but never quite rose to that level. Like, I'd say, like, Division 2. I really liked Outriders. Um, but they're, you know, Destiny is, is the clear favorite. But now we're circling back to Diablo. <laughs> and Diablo 4 is coming out essentially a decade after Diablo 3, and has evolved from there, and now has sort of done some things, or reminded me of things that... Diablo does really well, that Destiny is, is sort of lacking. And today, I kind of want to focus on uh, the loot. And to me, this has kind of become one of the biggest problems of Destiny. And, like, I'm not really... I don't think I'm really making a, a breakthrough here to say this. <laughs> um, but the loot pursuit in Destiny has gotten pretty stale. And it, it's a little hard to think of kind of a way out of this. Um also, keep in mind for all for all of this segment or future segments that Destiny is a six year old game. Destiny is a Destiny Two is a six year old game. Destiny is a franchise is approaching a decade old. Diablo Four came out a week ago, so obviously things that are good in Diablo now could be problems in the future. And we have to give Destiny some credit for being alive this long and still being fun to play after all this time. However, this has created some certain problems like the, the loot pursuit. Uh, Diablo. You are constantly getting uh, new gear after, like, level, I don't know, 25, 30. Legendaries start dropping. Then later, sacred legendaries. Then later, uniques. And you use all of these different things in conjunction with your skills. Uh, different affixes mi mixing and matching across all your armor pieces, your jewelry, your weapons. To uh, very, very, you know, heavily customized builds tailored to exactly what you want to do. Um... And it feels like every drop is potentially relevant uh, because you can extract the legendary affix and put it on something else. 
You can upgrade individual pieces of armor and weapons to make them more effective. You can even turn rares with good stats on them or, or good uh, rolls into legendaries by um, imprinting stuff on them. Uh, and it, it just feels very fresh and useful and like every drop you get, you're excited for. Uh, Destiny has sort of lost that, I would say, in a number of different ways. I would say the one thing that Destiny is still doing with this that is pretty solid is exotics. They, oh, hi, Evie. They are introducing, you know, every time they introduce a new exotic, it is usually something that is, is very different than anything we've seen before. Exotic weapons in particular, I think, do a really good job of this. Uh, usually when a new exotic weapon is, is introduced, it's these days, it's something like really unique. I really like uh, Centrifuge in this season. Um, I don't have the Strand uh, <laughs> Dungeon Trace Rifle, but I hear that's really good. Uh, I'm back to using Delicate Tomb, which even in a bad season, Season of Plunder, uh, that was, it's, I love that weapon. It's it's so fun. And Exotic Armor, maybe a little, a little lesser extent. I would say it's maybe like 50-50 whether Exotic Armor these days is a hit or a miss and how, how relevant it is. Maybe like 30-70, honestly. But everything else is is not amazing in this regard. Um, armor has become really, really close to just being cosmetic skins. Uh, they have really... The mod system meant you no longer had to search for like specific roles on armor, which was good for customization, but not really encouraging farming of armor. They uh, removed elemental affinity, which again was not really a good system in the first place, but it meant that you needed far, far, you know, less armor sets because you no longer had to, like, worry about the mods uh, being on specific ones. So now, essentially, this is like, do you want your, you know, which triple 100, which double 100 do you want? And then you just kind of mix and match your 64, 65 plus uh, armor for that and then just reskin it how you want. That is essentially it. And nothing is really being introduced with armor that is making you farm more relevant armor. The exception there is maybe artifice armor for these little little stat boosts, but that is not really game changing and there's only really one activity uh, where you can get that. Or wait, did they add it something else? I think it's still dungeons. Um, so armor is like almost non-existent where like it is such a core part of Diablo builds. There's, I forget how many pieces between armor and jewelry, like I don't know, seven, I think, seven or eight, uh, all of which are relevant whereas like Destiny, you're slotting in mods, but like the individual pieces don't matter except probably for your exotic. Uh, weapons are, are better, but weapons are, are struggling, I think. Destiny is doing a good job of introducing new perks every season, but I would say there's maybe one good perk for every, or one really useful good perk for every four or five they make. Um, I would say certain perks on legendaries have become almost must-haves through power creep. It is pretty hard in, in PvE at least. Like PvP has all your your you know, those roles rarely change. Like they don't do too many new ones. Like everyone's still getting, you know, opening shot on <laughs> snipers and shotguns and things like range finder. Like th those don't really change. PvE, ever since subclass 3.0, for at least primaries especially, you want bolt shots, you want stabilizing rounds now, you want hatch laying on strand weapons. Uh, what am I forgetting? Uh, incandescent on solar. And if you don't have that, it does feel kind of suboptimal that you're not doing something in regard to, you know, how things relate to your, your build. And they're trying to do some new stuff with archetypes and, but like the new developments are like, oh, we have a stasis waveframe launcher, or we have a strand sword now. Like they're just sort of introducing like slightly different archetypes, slightly different elements in, in different slots now, but we have vaults full of hundreds and hundreds of weapons, and it is just genuinely hard to get super excited about farming new weapons, especially seasonal weapons, which are usually less exciting than raid or dungeon weapons, when you have your favorites kind of already. Like, I, I'm already, like, <laughs> right now I'm back to using Chromatic Fire <laughs> from Season of the Splicer, because that was just such a good feeling. Auto rifle, and auto rifle's got a buff, and it doesn't have an origin trait, but like who cares? Like it's still it's still a good weapon, and you really don't need to use like 95% of the new legendaries they introduce 
and they're just not that much better than the old weapons we used to have outside of, I would say, a lot of the, uh, you know, the subclass 3.0 linked ones. And those ones you feel like you almost have to use in many instances. It just, it just feels really rare that there is something that you just absolutely need uh, to go for. And I also think that crafting has not helped with this. The ability to craft exactly the role you want may be good for reducing five out of five attempts at farming, and yet it has made essentially every drop that is not a red frame for craftable weapons a disappointment. You will dismantle everything because you know you're probably going to get all the red frames and craft whatever you want. I, I read someone say that red frames dropping are more exciting than exotics now. And they are, but you don't even care about the weapon. You just care about the pattern and you're extracting the pattern. And now Bungie is also doing a thing where you can extract uh, or you can put a red frame on something so like it's even less farming. So I think Destiny has a problem with loot drops. Like I it is genuinely hard to think of times when you are truly excited about a, a loot drop that drops in the wild. Very, very rarely will you get a perfect 5 out of 5 roll on something that is also not craftable. Uh, I think they are, you know, they're experimenting with doing not craftable things like dungeons don't have craftable weapons right now. Half the seasonal weapons this season don't have random rolls. Um... But for the most part, you're you're just going for crafting stuff. And the only really exciting drops is probably like the raid exotic or the dungeon exotic. That is really the only thing I see that gets people truly excited. And it's like one weapon a season, kind of. And like they're just putting, you know, for, for a couple of years now, they're just putting one of the new best exotics just straight up in the season pass. So you don't even have to like farm the seasonal activity to get that or something. Um it's just it's just lacking in a way where Diablo reminded me that like loot drops can be really exciting again. And Borderlands has that to a certain extent, but Borderlands almost goes too far and its legendary drop rates are like just nuts and like it, it becomes almost overwhelming uh you know with bosses dropping 5 6 7 8 legendaries at a time and like it's it's almost too much there. But Diablo really strikes the balance of kind of drop rates in general. And true excitement when you get a unique or get uh, a sacred piece with exactly the, the, the roles you're looking for. And, like, you can't just, like, craft that. Like, you can put an affix on something, but you still need to get all these different elements that, that affect your build in a way that you really can't just fully craft something to negate the concept of farming altogether. Um so this, this right now, I think, is one of the core differences between Diablo 4 and Destiny 2 and why Diablo 4 feels more exciting from a, a looting perspective and a progress perspective. Again, it just came out, and once you have maybe a copy of every unique and, and all your god roll, whatever, it's like, it'll be over. But they are going to be introducing more stuff every season because this is a live game, and it may feel like that, again, if they keep introducing new kind of important weapons and armor pieces and affixes and stuff like that. Uh, also, the way you get affixes is really interesting. Like, you can extract them individually from your weapons, but also there's 128 or something like that, 120 dungeons on the map where each one is giving you an affix for, for your class, and they work, the whole thing is cross-account. So that's I think that's a cool way to do it. And again, you're going to run out of dungeons eventually, but um, for now, it's it's a an interesting way of doing it. So... I do think that is one of Destiny's core problems is the way it's it's handling loot and the way it's handled loot for a while. Like, you know, the blues days were, were really bad. The auto pickup of blues and going to the postmaster, that was just like clutter. But even now it's like a legendary armor drop is nothing. It is essentially a blue because it's not going to roll with high stats. Not that armor is really relevant anyway. Uh, world drop legendaries are nothing usually. Like occasionally there's a good world drop legendary. Um, there are no world drop exotics really anymore. Once you have them, they just, nothing drops. There's no random rolls on exotics. So once you have an exotic, you're done. Uh, so really the rewards are from like engram focusing or maybe an end of activity chest. And then the rare, rare occasion where something is truly exciting, like a dungeon weapon or raid weapon. And I, th I think that's a problem. Uh, anyway, so that's my kind of 
first take here, I'm, I'm going to go into other things like new player onboarding and customization and things like that later. And um, I don't know, we'll, we'll see if everyone gets mad about this. But again, I'm not trying to dunk on Destiny. I just, I think it's an interesting point of comparison to kind of talk about why people are, are really vibing with Diablo right now and why and what Destiny can maybe learn from that as, as they go forward. So anyway, thanks for watching and I will talk to you soon. Take care.